مرة قالت لي أمي شو ما عملتي بتضلي بنتي إن كان زعلتيني أو غلطتي طبعا شو أقول شو أحكي كيف برد عيالي شايف الدنيا كلها بابتسامتي نفسها يلي شافتني بورقة وقلم لما كان عمري ثمان سنين مو أكتر وقالت لي أوعك توقفي تكتبي وظلت فخورة فيني حتى لما بطلت أصلا أكتب بالعربي اللغة اللي هي لغتها لغة أمها لغة أبي وجدودي لغة كل واحدة من أخواتي لغتي وقد ما كبرت وقد ما الدنيا علمتني جملتها المفضلة للساعتة أنتي ما بتكبري عندي حتى لما صرت طولي صار لي بكتب 15 سنة بس والله لهلأ ما بعرف أوصف لكم معنى كلمة أمي حبيت بشارككم بهالبيس بس عندي كم بيس بدي أحكي لكم إياهم بالعربي today و the first one is actually about types of love and it goes something like this like most writers I've been thinking about love specifically types of love how when we have one we want another and when we have none we want whatever there's puppy love and self love mature love and wild love there's quiet love and loud love there's loving your parents and your siblings, your career and your religion. There's loving your cat, your dog, that one song you almost forgot. There's just so many kinds of love. We say lovesick moron and loveless marriage. No one seems to win when you really think about it. Because an epic love must not be stable and a crazy but subtle love must not have any passion. It's tragic that we try to define the borders of something beyond our understanding. And then there's unconditional love, a term I don't really fathom the meaning of. If you claim to, some, to love someone unconditionally, is that I'll stick by you in illness or I vow to help you bury a body? Is it I'll still love you when we're both gray or I'll stay even when you don't want me? Is it I promise there's no one else? or I promise to react to betrayal casually. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm overthinking a term that simply means, even if all you have are broken pens, if you're foreign to metaphors and similes, even if it's with all the wrong words, I just want you to help me write my story. Thank you. Okay, for this next one, I actually need your help. Can you guys do me a favor? Shout feelings at me. Anything, hungry, sad, depressed, excited, bored. Shout. Louder! More, give me more, give me more. You have feelings, give them to me. Yes, I want to hear more. Okay, well, thank you for feeding me your feelings. Sometimes I don't know what's mine and what's yours anymore. Am I really bored in my life or have enough people questioned my being content for too long? Did I really always like to read or did I watch too many times as my mother lovingly touched the spines of every book in her library? We all feed each other our feelings every single day. And I want to know when you're feeling alone, feeling sad, feeling hollowed out. I want to know what I could do about that. So I'll keep consuming your every ounce of pain. Your anxiousness about feeling lost in every way, your sorrow served with the side of past mistakes. I'd like to drink the oceans you're drowning in and feast on the monsters you fight within. But what happens when I'm full? When I'm filled to the brim and scared to admit I'm at risk of falling over. When I'm fighting my own battles and don't know how I could give you my battered army to win yours. How could I stand tall if all I ever do is lend you my legs? It took a long time for me to realize this, but we're not bottomless pits. The more you take on other people's weights, the deeper the hole you'll be buried in. It took a Swiss, didn't it? Sorry. <laughs> okay, I have one more very short and sweet piece hopefully to end it on a better note. And it was actually inspired 
by a conversation I had with a friend of mine that I haven't seen in six years. <laughs> Um, and it's beautiful because sometimes the most random conversations turn into something else. And that conversation in particular is what gave birth to this piece. They say, if a poet loves you, you're one of the luckiest people to walk this earth. That you'll be immortalized in ink, dressed in the finest similes, and perpetually decorated by metaphors. We don't say much about those who heard a poet. How they get painted with all of their true colors. How the ugly parts of them get spattered like blood on the canvas of imagery. So that you can't read them as anything but sharp enough to draw blood in the first place. And to be fair, poets embellish the truth and romanticize darkness, but it's hard to understand the foolishness of one who crosses a poet to begin with. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>